hear from the people of Manipur how they feel about the month-long violence that has marred their state. How do they reach, they view the outreach that has been made by the Union Home Minister Amit Shah at this very critical juncture to bring about ceasefire between the Metis and the Kukis in Manipur. Let's hear from the people of Manipur how do they feel is going to bring about a sustained peace and harmony in the state. Let's start off my conversation with Gabriela Chongloy. She is a research scholar at JNU and she lives over here in New Delhi. It's good to have you, Gabriela, on the telecast with us. And my first question to you is going to be your first reaction when Manipur saw this unprecedented violence. It's been one month. There have been over 100 people that have been killed. Um, it is interestingly, you know, I was in Imphal on the second, and um, I was there for the weekend just to uh, visit my family. And uh, I uh, the weekend before uh, the the event unfolded, and I came out of Imphal on the second, which means I escaped it uh, by the uh, by just few hours, you know. Yeah. And uh, on the third is when the event unfolded. And uh, it scares me to imagine that if I had been part of that, like, you know, I would have to go through what uh, uh, thousands of uh, my cookie people, my br cookie brethren had to go through uh, immediately uh, on the third and fourth, where they were all um, uh, immediately evacuated from their localities into uh, CRPF camps, which includes uh, my own grandma, who's 97 years old, and my brother, uh, who happened to be, un uh, you know, uh, ill-fated on that day when they had to be taken to uh, uh, in that kind of uh, circumstances, uh, not knowing what could happen to you when you were getting news about other people being pulled out of their cars and being killed in the broad daylight. And uh, it, it scares me to think that uh, it, this is what a lot of us have uh, uh, gone through. Uh, in the past uh, one month, things have not cooled down, it has not calmed down, and it, it's, uh, uh, it, it's, in, in, it's like, I don't understand why there is no uh, uh, stoppage to this uh, inhuman activity that is still going on till date. Gabriela, uh, what's your view on this uh, civil unrest that is taking place in Manipur? And this is a dispute between the Métis community and uh, the Kuki tribes, and it was... Right. Uh, it was uh, at the at the order that had been put out by the courts in Manipur that led to this instigation with regards to the right. land dispute, which is at the core of the matter between these two communities. Uh, the land dispute is something that has been, you know, uh, in the tension uh, in the surface. And uh, it has, it's been a surface tension for the over like decades and it's always been there. And it has now erupted like a volcano when um, uh, uh, when the ST uh, when the ST demand had come up and when every other uh, tribal community came together to protest against it. It was a protest against the government, and this is something that was mistaken uh, uh, and led to a inter uh, community conflict between the Metes and the Cookies. And uh, it has the dominoes effect has been so uh, great that uh, now we're not sure like where this is going and uh, it has created a lot of tension between the two and if you are on social media and if you look at the uh, twitter and instagram and the way the kind of news that has that are, that are being generated um, all over sorry yeah can you hear me yeah. hello yeah i can yeah, hear yeah, you hi. please go ahead we can hear you fine. yeah yeah, yeah. So uh, the, the kind of news, fake news that are being generated on social media is something to be really concerned about. Right. And uh, where, where uh, you know, uh, images that are coming out of the state is being portrayed by the other community as their own. And this can really create a fear uh, psychosis among the people and lead to more, uh, lead to more, um, uh, violence and uh, this needs to be something that we can we should be concerned about absolutely absolutely right. you know i'm being i'm right now being joined by rajat sethi he's the former advisor to the 
Manipur CM Biren Singh. Rajat, it's good to have you on the telecast and uh, getting to understand from you the complications and the complexities of keeping the harmony between the various tribes in Manipur and the Meeti community who live in the valley. You have been in a position of uh, importance to uh, be, with the, be with the Chief Minister, uh, go to these sensitive areas, figure out the disputes, what is the, what is the problems that they are facing, how can there be harmony that can be restored. Uh, what has your experience been living in Manipur? Well, um, I had the opportunity of serving the government of Manipur uh, for the last five years. Um, I uh, exited the role uh, in 2022 once the new government was sworn in. Um, for five years, uh, I have worked closely with the Honorable Chief Minister as well to continuously build uh, confidence building measures alongside uh, uh, Metes, uh, bringing in development not just limited to the valley area, but also to the hills. Uh, we co-designed plans like Go to Hill, uh, ensuring the entire state apparatus, the government apparatus, goes and services uh, the last man standing, reach out to inaccessible areas and ensure that the government services um, schemes and all the beneficiaries are reached out to. So a lot of things were being done uh, for the past five years and we were of the view that the state had definitely moved past its uh, old sort of uh, cleavages and looked forward into towards marching on a productive uh, economic growth for the state. And this was the reason why the state was growing at a double digit pace. Um, but what happened and unfolded in the month of May has really saddened and, and looking at uh, uh, the current of state of affairs, what is essential is, I mean, there will be a lot of blame game happening between one community against the other community. And there is absolutely no point that we continue that blame game going forward as well some point in time the cookies and the metes will have to you know uh, leave aside all the uh, differences that is there and embrace each other and again go back to the glorious uh, uh, you know journey that both of these communities had had been embarking upon right but Rajan, is... you know, this this is this has been and i would like to again highlight a deep seated problem between the tribal communities of the region and the people who live in the valley uh, there have been a number of flashpoints that have been raised in, 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 in the past various years. But the violence that has been witnessed in the last month, the four weeks that, we have, that have gone by, has been unprecedented. And it is the people, the locals, the innocent who have suffered. You know, they, their houses have burned, they have been displaced. Their, their shops and the area of work that they go to have been completely destroyed. They are in relief camps. And there was a statement that was put forth by the Chief Minister Biren Singh also just a while ago. He said that uh, he had requested an appeal that had been made to people, those who were the miscreants, asking them to do not disrupt the relief materials that are reaching out to these innocent people who are at this point of time in relief camps. Now, there has also been a, a confidence building exercise that has been initiated by Home Minister Amit Shah as well. He's visited Imphal. He arrived in Imphal two days ago. 29th is when he arrived. Today is the third day. Now, uh, what more can be done to appease the people, to appeal to them to maintain peace? There's been interim peace that has been uh, 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 achieved with the Home Minister arriving. He has asked people to hold their peace for 15 days, but this is just interim. Uh, the major issue at this point in time is still not being resolved. See, uh, it's not like in the valley only the Metei people live. The valley has been uh, co-inhabited by people of the Koki community, of the Kabui community, also of uh, of, of Pangals, uh, which is the Muslim community living all together. Essentially, uh, you know, there are deep-seated questions whether the Metei community is right in their demand for uh, NST status or not. Uh, what is the permanent solution around land-related issues? What is the permanent solution around reserved forest? What should one do about illegal migrants coming in from Myanmar? I mean, that is a problem. I was part of the government when the military junta rule had come into Myanmar and the democratic government were what was pushed aside a lot of people. And I'm very offended that uh, in, in this border town of Moray, uh, I had myself gone and seen um, camps after camps of illegal migrants who had who were forced to leave Myanmar and come into India. What do you do about that? 
all of these are important pestering issues which will completely which has the potential of again derailing the peace process so 15 days what uh, the honorable home minister has asked both the communities is that at least allow the violence to stop right now uh, we have seen that uh, certain metai miscreants have snatched weapons from the police they are armed so is the kuki militant community uh, who have entered into the communities and into the villages they are also armed if both the parties are armed and they keep shooting at each other and the violence continues there will be more deaths no peace process can even start uh, with 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 the with gun violence happening on the streets of of the state so okay. i think what uh, okay. what the honorable home minister has said that at least there be peace there should be no more gun violence for the next uh, two weeks or so and in this period the community leaders of both the communities the kukis and the metais will have to sit together and one by one all these vexed issues deep seated problems we will have to find a temporary solution for them that's the perhaps the only road map that uh, the honorable home minister has suggested to to the community leaders and let's see how it goes uh, two weeks is not a long time we it will all okay. come to us Viraj, Ra, also, also there have been a lot of talk that has been happening amidst the unrest that is being witnessed with the two warring communities there has also been talk that is speaking about the drug mafia also the insurgency issue the immigration from myanmar you have porous borders uh, is that problem also getting highlighted in wake of this unrest that is being witnessed within manipur as i'm saying that you know why has manipur been such a big uh, tinder box there is a specific reason why did the violence suddenly shoot up so much that indian uh, even the indian armed forces are finding it hard to quell hmm. the reason is that so many of these problems were all juxtaposed there is a problem of of drugs there is a problem of poppy cultivation um, and there is a problem of illicit arms trade happening in that region it's a porous border even china angle is there because china is continuously supporting through arms lot of insurgent groups and insurgent activities in that region so understand that there is an international politics also at play there is a domestic politics of that state at play lot of these communities are entangled in a zero sum problem any thing that you do to one community is seen at the cost of the other community and all of this these problems when, once they conflate and they come together you see such kind of a sudden eruption which goes beyond the control of any administration to quell that has been the reason why you know manipur is burning to the scale it is burning today what is the solution then rajat there have been a lot of infrastructure projects that have been announced by the government they are in various stages of execution there are a number of educational institutions that have been launched there are several other projects to allow for employment to be generated uh, can these be uh, reliable solutions to fight this menace see uh this is where i think my own learning ended because we all thought that if you bring in lot of development uh, to the state perhaps the social cleavages between the communities can be eradicated you know because everybody would be so used to economic development they would not go back to you know disrupting a uh, piece of the state but i was perhaps wrong and perhaps the indian administration was wrong about that uh, that assumption i think uh, you know uh, roads railways the amount of work that was being done in terms of building up the infrastructure of of a state which was in a very bad stage 5 years ago but nothing of that uh, sort uh, really brought in any permanent uh, shift in the social condition of that state i think going forward first the trust has to be built between the three communities before any program any developmental program is taken up the uh, you know because of this event uh, in the month of may the cleavages are so deep at this stage right now kuki community does not even want to live with the metai community that is the level of uh, trust gap between the two hmm. how do you solve this i think the biggest problem here is that uh, some formula some guarantees from the state and the central government basically to ensure a peaceful atmosphere for both the metais and the kukis has to be created otherwise i mean breaking up the state into smaller union territories or autonomous councils all of those solutions perhaps one party or the other party will not agree to and that should not be on the table of discussion as of now and i fully understand and respect the kuki sentiments at this stage when they feel that they are deeply insecure living alongside metais i can understand that so is metai demand they are saying mm. there should be no suspension of operation with militants the government should eradicate the militants and not have talks perpetually with them even the metai sentiment is correct 
So among these two or three very important uh, immediate issues, we have to be clear that what we are proposing is acceptable to both the communities and small common ground is created. You cannot Fair imagine enough. at this stage a wide common ground would be there. We have to start off with very small fig leaves that we can pluck in the, in the current scenario. Fair enough. Uh, I'm going to get into the conversation, Major Lamtingtang Kongsai. Uh, sir, it's good to connect with you. Thank you for joining us on the telecast. Uh, Major Kongsai is the secretary of the Kuki Welfare Association. He joins us from Guwahati. Now, Major Kongsai, you've heard it from Rajat Sethi. You've also heard what Gabriela Chongloy had to say. Uh, what has your opinion been uh, uh, being a part of the Kuki Welfare Association and the outreach that has been brought in from the Ministry of Home Affairs, uh, Home Minister Amit Shah himself meeting prominent members of the Kuki community uh, in a bid to then persuade them to speak to their community members to ensure that this interim peace and the ceasefire that at this point of time has been able to achieve, that the Home Minister has been able to achieve, can be spread over to a larger, longer period of time. Uh, thank you so much for having me in your program and I feel privileged to be a part of this. And I uh, also feel uh, privileged to hear out uh, our co-panelist uh, Rajatji. Uh, here, uh, I want to brought out uh, one or two points uh, which I think which are very important and I, we should not miss out. Uh, because uh, the uh, ethnic class or ethnic cleansing sometimes we uh, feel like to call it, uh, because because of the population proportions and all that, because when the two uh, same uh, same uh, parties uh, have a problem, we can call it a class. But the proportion, the population uh, uh, proportions and all that, I think uh, to use a class may not be the, the right proportion also. Uh, I find it a, the underneath behind one of the most important thing that we missed out and uh, Razatji, I think somehow missed out is the you know the radicalization of the aram by tango i think you may have heard mm -hmm. these are the radical youth uh, organization of the metis groups you know the valley uh, and uh, the metis uh, lipun these are the radicalized uh, which are you know is somehow uh, a groom and uh, these are becoming stronger and stronger in the uh, you know uh, with the help of the present regime the present government uh, you know, the seeds are soiled in a very, very, uh, you know, un uh, undesirable way. And they become uh, outgrown. And I think uh, the uh, the hatreds, which are, you know, uh, uh, planted in the past two, three years, uh, is, uh, you know, becoming so uh, grown so fast. And I think uh, the outburst, uh, which is happening uh, on the 3rd of uh, May, is uh, actually it is not just a sudden one. It's a full thought out plan. Uh, but uh, to my mind, I think it is a little bit too fast and it grown out a little bit too fast. Uh, I think even others may also uh, think that way. One or two points which I uh, would like to, uh, you know, uh, clarify or maybe I uh, put, I want to put my point across regarding that uh, the valley, uh, the, the valley, uh, is occupied by, uh, as Razati says, a number of uh, communities, the Nagas, the Kukis, and the Maitis. Uh, there are a number of regions because the maximum uh, amenities, uh, we can say the airports, we can say the educational institutions, the medical facilities, 90% of the uh, development uh, things are, or the uh, amenities uh, which are required are concentrated in the, uh, region, valley. the valley and that region. attracts that attracts uh, everyone that attracts uh, the valley dwellers the metis that's natural but it that attracts the nagas also and it attracts the cookie also now the problem here uh, after third of may the problem arises the pushing out of one community from that entangle or that that you know uh, that, that garden that beautiful garden where a number of flowers are there so in that way out of that beautiful very beautiful flower uh, out of that garden 
one particular flowers is targeted, earmark and push it out to the corner in a day or two. Uh, we can't we can't uh, take it as accident. We can't take it as accident because it's in the capital of the city. Okay. We can't uh, we can't uh, take the excuse of okay. uh, so, no no police. No, uh, let me just com complete it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Actually, we can't uh, take the excuse of uh, unavailability of the security force uh, and all that because it's in the capital. Because if it is in the outskirts, it looks, let's say, one hour to go and all that. that no. It is... It's right uh, in the heart. And you're questioning at this point of time that why there yeah. was inaction the, from the, the police inaction, side. No, 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 inaction is one. And mm. the second one is, uh, to some extent, uh, taking side the uh, minority, the community, the cookie Joe community, are feeling, side, feeling that the government is taking side. Neutrality and trying their best to control, that will be very nice. No, it doesn't happen that way. Okay. And the government, to the eyes of the minority, the government is taking side. That is the very, very okay. uh, so then, unfortunate. Okay, okay. Major Kongsai, the then, then uh, what do you make as part of the Kuki Welfare Association? How do you then react to the Home Minister visiting uh, Manipur, do you think there could be a, resolu a peaceful resolution that can be brought forth? Because pr pr the, the Home Minister has now visited prominent members of the Kuki community as well. He has gone about meeting eminent personalities in the whole state of Manipur. He has also reviewed the situation with the armed forces, the CAPF that is at this point of time deployed over there. Uh, the Manipur police is, uh, is, is also being questioned and probed by him. And most of all, he has said that the CBI is going to probe into the violence and arson that has taken place in the last one entire month in Manipur. Does this instill confidence among the people of Kuki with the visit and the action plan that has been put forth by the Home Minister? Ma'am, it's a, it's a very nice gesture. But uh, ideally, uh, you being in the uh, medica, uh, media fraternity, uh, this is very ideal and a good gesture from the Home Minister. But it could have been uh, much earlier. Uh, because 3rd of May, uh, and now we are in the 31st of May. So, in that way, uh, the delay is a little bit too much. Okay. And I think uh, it could have been uh, much earlier. It could have been in a day or two. Because the the level of a, a destruction or the level of, uh, you know, uh, the crime committed within two, three, uh, let's say, uh, no, in the first May, three days, uh, in the first fourth, week, fifth. there were 100, the I think week. there were 30, 35, yeah. and then 75 people that were killed. And only I think yeah. last the week, there was uh, there were another yeah. 35 people that, that died, including the armed forces as well as the as as, as communities. Ma'am, the number counting, actually, uh, that technicality, I'm not, uh, I think uh, that could vary because the thing is, even counting of deaths are not done uh, to some extent. Uh, uh, even the government officials are not coming out with names and all that. That it may take times. But the thing is that uh, at this age, uh, at this uh, what do you call it, the developed age uh, in a capital, uh, this type of havocs are happening, and uh, the reactions uh, could have been much earlier and could have been much faster. That would be what I could. Uh, appeal and I, what I could express from my side. Okay. Uh, but not, not nonetheless, the gestures of the uh, Home Ministers uh, in the past two, three days, uh, his visits are very uh, a welcoming uh, gesture. Uh, but uh, 15 days of calm, that that uh, what I would like to uh, ensure is, how can, uh, you know, the, uh, actually I want, uh, I want to, I want you to know uh, me, more of the uh, welfare secretary, or I am the welfare president, but n n less of that. I want you to know me as I am the, uh, you know, a army officer. Yeah. Uh, I'm a major in the army, and I served there for uh, a 12 plus years, and I uh, adequately know the strength of the army. And uh, now uh, the Home Minister uh, uh, trying to request and uh, showing a little bit of helplessness, saying that he would request you to keep calm. No. I would rather uh, rather rather enforce the calm. You know, the the strength of the the strength of the armed forces is too good. Uh, too uh, should not be undermined. They have the will. If the government have the will, they could definitely. Uh, okay. 
डिफिकल्ट For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon.